we're going to be talking about exponents. I like this one right here. It's a World War II meme. <laughs> oh, Panzer of the Lake, what's your wisdom? Well, its percentages are reversible. So 6% to 50 is equal to 50% of 6, which is much easier to calculate. That's actually true, by the way. So that's actually something to think about. So let's talk about exponents then. First of all, uh, I mean, some people already know lots about them, which is great. This serves as a kind of review, but it's an important review because without this uh, skill, you're going to be really uh, having a tough time with this topic. So let's let's see if we can first just review these. I'll try to do them fairly quickly. But uh, first, like, what is even an exponent? I mean, it, let's say we have like x to the power of 3. So this right here, um, I would call this right here the base. That's the thing that we're raising uh, to some exponent. This right here is called the exponent. So what do I mean by an exponent? I mean, it's like to the power of. You multiply this thing times itself three times. So this would be like x times x times x because it's cubed and so on. So base exponent. And if we have the same base, do you notice that's what we're playing with here with different things with like bases at least or exponents. Here are some of the rules. Now, these aren't in your formula book, so you do kind of need to know these. That's why I wanted to just revise these for you. Um, so if you have the same base, like a to the b times a to the c. So in other words, we're saying two things are the same base, but they're being multiplied together. I don't know if you remember what we do here, but we say it's a to the b plus c. We add the exponents. So an example here could be, um, actually, you know what I don't know what I'll do? I'll just do each of them right here one at a time like this, just to try to see if you can remember these. How about a to the b, so same base, a, divided by a to the c? Well, if you knew two things multiplied add together then, that means the exponents in here will subtract. So this is just rules you need to know. Um, a to the b to the power of c. So this, so this time, c, haha, ha, we're raising something to an exponent to another exponent. So sort of like recursive, we've got a to the b to the c. Well, we take the same base, a, but this time b to the c, we actually multiply the two, so it's bc. Negative exponents, these two actually, I think, are the sneakiest ones for a lot of students. Both of these ones are here. I think these ones are here are the sneakier ones. So you got to remember a negative exponent means it's one over that thing. So uh, in this case right here, it would be a to the power of b. Nice little trick that I use. I say anything to negative exponent, I imagine that whole thing is on the bottom. Just think of that. Whatever is to the negative exponent, that whole thing is down at the bottom. If this was like, you know, squared, then, you know, that would be like a to the minus 2. Then it would be a squared here on the bottom. And finally, um, roots. We're used to seeing square roots. Uh, normally we see something like this right here. Like that right there. But we see square roots so often we get lazy, we don't even bother with the two. Right? You've probably been learning that a long time ago. You just call it square root. But it turns out you can have a cube root. So how do we deal with that? So any root, get it? Any root? Um, any root can be written like this. We can write it as a to the power of, and we do a fractional exponent. We do 1 over n. So this is this rule right here. So in other words, uh, well, I'll show you some right here. So these are here are the rules you need to know in order to have success with exponents. Okay, these are the, the main exponent rules here. These are not in your formula booklet. You do need to know these. So now let's do a few examples and see how they go. And I'm not going to then just show you. I'm going to be solving all sorts of things quite straightforward if you know these rules. So for example, 2 to the 5 times 2 to the x. Same base, so I can do this trick. Remember, it's just going to be 2 to the, let's see, it's just 5 plus x. Now, I don't know what x is, so I guess I just got to leave it. Okay. How about this one? x cubed over x to the 5. Well, it's x to the power of, let's see now. I've got these two same bases, but I'm dividing. That means I have to subtract the bases, so it's 3 minus 5. That I can simplify. 3 minus 5 is just minus 2. And hey, if you really wanted to, you can use this trick right here. So this would be the answer. Okay. This could be the answer here. Or you could say... It's also 1 over x squared. See what I've done? This one right here. So same base, I have an exponent, and I have another exponent. So this is going to be, although it looks crazy, this is x to the 1 half, and I have to do times 4. Maybe I shouldn't put uh, x for the times. I'll just say, all right, like this. This here then becomes times 4. 
Do you remember what we do then? We just do x to the, let's see now, 1 times 4 is just 4 over 2. But 4 divided by 2 is just 2. So it turns out this is the same thing as just saying x squared. Now, if you weren't sure about that, look, this is to the power of 1 half. That is uh, x to the 1 half using this trick. This is a square root. This is really like saying square root of x, and all that's to the power of 4. That's really what I've done. Well, if I did this thing here squared, it would be x, and if I squared it, it would be x squared. Anyway, I just want to show you. There we go. How about this? x to the minus 1 third. Well, this here would be 1 over x cubed. That's what this is. I just want to show you because a lot of times you'll end up with something like 2b to the minus 4, and people think, is the 2 also on the bottom? Well, it depends. Did the 2 have a negative exponent here? No, it didn't. The 2 here is just a regular number. It's actually on top. The b to the minus 4, that's the one that's got the negative exponent. So that's the one that goes down to the bottom. So it's b, and instead of uh, negative 4, it becomes plus 4. So it's 2 over b to the 4. It's the same thing as this. They're the same as each other. Later on, when I do some videos on calculus, I'll show you that when we're doing derivatives, it turns out this right here is not very good for doing calculus on it. This is. This is actually more calculus friendly. All right, let's do this one here. So fourth root of uh, x to the 8. Sounds really complicated. Let's just deal with x to the 8. Well, that's x to the 8. And if I want to take uh, the fourth root of that, what do we do? A fourth root is to the power of 1 over 4. All right, so I'll do the power of 1 over 4. What happens when I take an exponent to an exponent? I use this rule. See, so now I've got to multiply these two numbers. So it's x to the power of, let's say, 8 times 1 is just 8. So it's 8 over 4. But 8 divided by 4, we know that it's 2. So to see how we've actually solved a whole bunch of these, okay? So we've done a whole bunch of these different answers here. Um, those are some examples. Now let's maybe go a little bit further with this right here. Let's start doing some sneakier looking ones, but they're not actually that bad, okay? Let me show you some more. So now we're just going to use these rules. Now we're going to start actually solving equations. So solve for x. So let's try to do these. All right. Mm, these two have the same base, which is a good news for you, because if you have two things that are in the same base, you can do something really nice. You can just equate the exponents. Because if this right here is the same base as this one, then I can say, ah, therefore, I can say that x equals just 3. Isn't that nice? So now that x must be 3, because 3 to the 3 is the same thing as 3 to the 3. So there you go. So do you notice same base? That actually is pretty nice. How about this one? Same base, right? 4 to the power of whatever and 4 to the power of whatever. Because of that same base, I can just equate the exponents. So 1 minus x equals 5. Well, then I just move the x over to the right. I make it a plus x. And I move the 5 over to the left. So I'm just doing two things at once. I'm not sure how comfortable you are with that. But I move my minus x to the right, becomes a plus x. And at the same time, I move my plus 5 to the left, made it a minus 5. Well, 1 minus 5 is minus 4. So my answer is x equals minus 4. You can always check if you did it right, because 1 minus minus 4 will give you 5. Okay, what do we do if they're not the same base? So I was trying to build these. I'm doing what's called scaffolding, right? Trying to build. So same base, nice and easy. Equate the exponents. What if they're not the same base? If they're not the same base, you must get them to the same base if you can. So you got to think now, hmm, okay, I've got my 3 to the x. That's fine. Did you know that 9 can be written as a power of 3? If you didn't, then you should be thinking that. So I need to rewrite 9 as 3 to the power of something. Did you know that 3 to the power of 2, right? 3 times 3, that's what that means. That's the same. And hey, now I'm in business. Do you see why it's really easy? Because x equals 2, because now they had the same base. Do you see the goal was to get them the same base? So i got a few more examples here. I like this 3 out of 2 people have trouble with fractions. Ha! Oh. So let's do this one right here. More things with different bases here. Can you guess what the base should be here? It should be still power, uh, still the base should be 3 here. So we're going to have to get this 27 as something with a 3. So I'm going to leave the left side. That one's still good. I'm happy with that one, 3x plus 1. But 27 can be written as 3 to the 3, because it's 3 times 3, which is 9, times 3, which is 27. So there we go. And once we have this, hey, same base, I equate the exponents. So it's 2x plus 1 equals 3. Then I can solve it. 
I have uh, 2x equals, uh, let's see, 3 minus 1, because I'm going to move my plus 1 to the right. So that means I have 2x equals 2. And therefore, I have x equals, let's see, to get my x by itself, I divide both sides by 2. That disappears this one. 2 over 2 is a 1. So there we go. Finally, this one right here looks really hard. Like, woof, what do I do here? But again, just do the same base. So I'm going to leave this one right here. By the way, you're most often going to see bases of 2 or 3. Most people are okay with bases of 2. That's why I'm messing around with the 3s, just to get used to the bases of 3. And no, you don't have to go that far. This is already pushing the limits of what you're supposed to know on an exam. You're supposed to know that 3 to the 3 is 27, but I'll give you a hint. It's nice to know that 3 to the 4 is 81. That one comes up once in a while as well. So mm, let's do this then. So 81, I just gave you the hint. It's 3 to the 4. That's the same thing. 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27, times 3 which is 81. So 3 to the 4, and then of course, same base, I equate the exponent, so I got x squared minus 3x equals 4. Now this is a quadratic. Now if I'm going to try to solve this, I can actually try to, you know, move this over. So the reason why this one is a little bit sneakier is because now I have to solve a quadratic. I really do. All right, so maybe I'll write that down. So solve a quadratic. So what I'm going to do then for this right here, in order to solve this quadratic, um, I'm actually going to use some tools. There's lots of ways to do this. You could do this with a graph. You could do this by completing the square. You could use the quadratic equation. Right? This is A, this is B, this is C. You could solve this by factoring. There's lots of ways of doing it. I'm just going to do it by factoring. Why is that a nice easy trick here? This right here, A is 1, B is minus 3, C is minus 4. I like to say a little trick, it's a weird one for factoring, but I like to say, all right, my uh, product, uh, product has to be AC, which is 1 times negative 4, so that has to be negative 4. My sum has to be just B, which is just minus 3. So I have to think of two numbers who multiply to minus 4 who add up to 3. Um, so I would normally write out all the different products of minus 4, which is 1, negative 4, negative 1, and 4. I suppose negative 2 and 2. Do any of those add up to 3, though? Uh, minus 3, I mean? Yes, this one. Now, nice little trick that I like to do. I then divide them by A, but A is just 1. Um, and then I read bottom to top. So I'll just show you. This is kind of weird what I do. This is actually a really neat trick, actually. So I actually always divide. So I find these two numbers. I always divide by A. So that a was 1 here, so I divide by a. Then I read bottom to top. In other words, it's this bottom thing times x plus this thing. So watch carefully. This is going to be 1 times x, and then I do plus 1. That's my first factor. My other one is 1 times x minus 4. The reason I like this trick is it works even if a isn't 1, because a lot of people's factorizing tricks don't work uh, if a isn't 1. This one at least works all the time. And then it's really easy to see once you've got it factorized, it's really easy to see what the answers are. I gotta make this thing equal to zero. So what value of x makes this thing zero? Uh, x equals negative one, that'll be one of them. And the other one is x equals four. So it turns out I've got two solutions in this case, right? I've got x equals minus one and x equals four. Those both work. Now, if you didn't like my factoring trick, don't worry, solve it any way you like. Use a quadratic equation, it's fine. Finally, very last example, solve for x. Here we go, 27. This looks really hard. But when you see it in the right way, it's not hard at all. Do you recognize what base I should use? Hopefully you're thinking 3. So I'm going to rewrite 27 as 3 to the power of 3. Now that 27 was to the power of x plus 1, so I still have to bring that to the power of x plus 1. Although that looks ugly, that's not going to be so bad. Do you recognize this? Can you write this as a power of 3? I don't know if you see it. This is 3 to the minus 1. Remember those rules we were just talking about, right? I just used a negative exponent rule. I just used this one. Right? That 3, like this right here. So th I'm using this trick right here, basically. So if I do that, that means then I've got 3 to the minus 1, of course, to the power of x. Do you see now I've got the same base? Now I've got to deal with it, though. So I've got 3. Now what happens with an exponent to an exponent? I multiply. So I've got to go 3 times x plus 1. Don't forget to multiply 3 out to both of them. So 3x and 3 times 1, which is 3. So it's 3x plus 3. That's what happens when I multiply this out. And then I've got 3 to the power, well, negative 1 times x. It's just negative x. And hey, I've got the same base, don't I? That means I can equate the exponents. 
So I can say 3x plus 3 equals negative x. And thankfully, this becomes much simpler. My minus x, I can move it to the left. It becomes a plus x. So 3x plus 1x is 4x. And at the same time, I'm going to move my positive 3 to the right, make it a minus 3. I've skipped a step here, kind of, but hopefully you can see it. So my minus x, I move to the left, becomes a plus x. 3x plus 1x is 4x. And this plus 3, move to the right. Well, now I get x by itself. I divide both sides by 4, so it's just minus 3 over 4, and I'm done. So that's the trick to exponents, okay? Although they look really tough, if you see them, so just think, get the same base and know your rules of exponents. You'll be fine.